Hallelujah. God bless everybody that's in attendance here this morning, this afternoon, if you will. And we do give God the glory, we give him the honor, and we give him the praise. It's once again that God has blessed us to come together to study of him, to learn of him, to give glory and honor to his name as we come together for another reflection and praise service. I, I'm reminded of the word, uh, in fact, I have it right in front of me. It says, come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's written in the scriptures in red. And we all know if it's in red, it ought to be red. <laughs> the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. We do give God the glory. We give honor to our pastor this afternoon, Bishop Lloyd Gwynn, as he prepares to come before us this afternoon to break the bread of life that we all may have a, 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 a refilling, if you will, a midweek serving of the word. And we thank God for that. We thank God for uh, another opportunity that we can just share this word and take this word to places that maybe someplace where it's never been. And we might be the only, the only Bible, the only gospel that someone will have on today or even in their life to beginning and all the way to the end. So we say welcome to those that are tuned in by way of social media as well that we all may fellowship one with another in spirit and in our souls. Let us pray. Our Father, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, Lord, we do love you. Lord, and we come on to you, Father, to learn of you, dear Lord. Father, that we may have that rest, dear God, that Jesus talks about in the, in the 11th chapter of Matthew, dear Lord. Father, that, that yoke, Father, that, that, that has us so, 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 so burdened down, Father, that Jesus... Uh, will be so readily to take that up on, on himself, Father, and our burdens will uh, be gone, Father. So yoke-destroying, burden-breaking, uh, burden-lifting word, Father, that you give unto us today, Father. Bless Bishop Gwynn as he comes forth, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, to break this bread of life again, dear Lord. So we thank you, and we give you praise, we give you honor, and we do give you glory on today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 amen. Well, praise the Lord. Everybody, it's good for us to be here today. It is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice, and we're glad to be part of this great and glorious, glorious, glorious day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, let's see how the Lord is going to bless us. Thank the Lord for our senior assistant pastor. We're praying for Brother Brumfield today as a senior assistant pastor share with you. I think about 1.30, all phones are going to go off very loud. So if you cut them off, it'll be good. If not, we're going to know you didn't do it. Mm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's see how he's going to bless us today. Uh, we're going to just pick up where we left off on Sunday and see how the Lord is going to prosper us. The title of Sunday's message, number one, was we are blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. Now, one of the most quoted words used by the Christian believer is the word blessed. If you've been around the church any length of time, you have heard the word blessed. We think, say things like have a blessed day or I'm blessed and I'm highly favored, or I'm blessed to be a blessing, or how about this, just God bless you. Just God bless you. You hear it all the time. Now, most of the time when we think blessed, we think personal. I got the car. I got the job. I got the money. I got the house. I got the spouse. That's what we think of when we think of blessed. Something good is coming to me. And so most of the time, almost all of the time, when we think of blessed, we think God is going to give us something good. And that's just about the only time that we will actually use the term blessed. 
But being blessed is so much bigger than places or people or things. Being blessed more ha has more to do with the presence of God than it has to do with the presence from God. Not the stuff we receive from him, but the fact that we have him. The Greek word often translated blessed is makarios. Makarios is spelled M-A-K-A-R-I-O-S. Makarios, which means fortunate, it means happy, it means enlarged or lengthy. In the Septuagint, which is the translation Septuagint, S-E-P-T-U-A-G-I-N-T. -E Give you a couple words that maybe you have, maybe you don't. The Septuagint is the translation of the Old Testament into the Greek language and the New Testament. Macarius is used to define the kind of happiness that comes from receiving favor from God. I'm blessed. I receive favor from God. Consequently, Macarius or bless is also translated favor. Now, though we often prefer good, bless is reserved also for that which is not so good. Amen? It is good, but it's also reserved for that which is not so good. Are you staying with me? All right. What that really, what really matters, I'm good, Deaconess. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. I copy a jam, so I can bring my lesson with me just in case. Amen. And I, I'm using a just in case message today. So though we prefer good, blessed is not only reserved for what is good. Sometimes it applies to things that are not so good. What really matters is not whether it's good or bad, even though I know we want goods. Amen. Say amen. We want good. Most of us want good. But what we really, really, really must have is the presence of God. It doesn't matter whether the situation is good or not so good. If I have God, to me, it's all good. If I have something that appears to be good and I don't have God, is that really good? That's only temporal. It's only going to last for a minute, and then the bottom is going to fall out. What? So watch this. What really matters is that God is with us and the favor or the blessings of God are upon us. Listen to what Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. Philippians 4, verses 12 through 13. I know what it is to be in need. He's under house arrest, mind you. He's under house arrest. He said, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Now, he's on house arrest. Would you say that that's good or not good? That's not good. For most people, that's not good. Nobody wants to be arrested in any shape, form, or fashion. But here he speaks as if he's in a place of royalty. He speaks as if he is in the White House. He speaks as if he's on vacation uh, in, in, in the Caribbean or something. I don't know. He speaks royally. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And so blessed is more about the presence of God than it is the presence of God. Even though we want presence, we really need his presence. Now, ideally, we want both. Amen? We really want his presence, and we want the presence. Amen? We want it both. Amen. Hey, Peter, did you have something you want to share? <laughs> we give God the glory. I was telling my wife, I'm going to get this started now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, with that, uh, I visit th those in jail sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I'm not the only one, but I notice when, and, and a lot of times we have a prison ministry here. We get so many that says, even they they, they get it twisted. Some it's good that I'm in here. Yeah. That I that 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 I can get close to God. Yeah. And you know, and, and a lot of prison, uh, a lot of people in captivity in prison and captivity even 
Because even Israel, when they were in captivity, they sort of settled you down yeah, sometimes. That's right. But it's still not a good thing for me. Now, I know even though the Psalms in one one nineteen seventy one says, it's good that I was afflicted, <laughs> afflicted that yeah. I might learn your way. Yeah, yeah. But that's a little rough, you know, <laughs> and I can understand. But Paul had a different mission while he was even there. Yeah. He could do that. A lot of times, even when they get out, they forget to bring Jesus yeah, with them yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And, and, and he's bringing out a good point. Often, they really do better incarcerated. They really do. I talk to a guy more than I talk to anyone else by far, and he's incarcerated. Literally. I mean, he sounds as strong as anybody I've ever talked to. I mean, as faith-filled as anybody that I've ever talked to. And many times, as senior assistant pastors bringing out, those guys, uh, they will talk about how well they're doing on the inside. All we can do then is pray that they carry it to the outside. But on the inside, they're developing. On the inside, they're working. On the inside, they seem to be disciplined. On the inside, they talk to me about worship. They talk to me about growth. They want Bibles. They want lessons. And we're going over those things on the inside. Really, more often, outside of class, I do it on the phone with them more than I would do it with anybody else. And so it is different. We want presence and we want his presence. The key is if I ooh, have presence, do I maintain his presence? That's the key because he said when they get out, they have his presence within, but they don't bring his presence when they come, when they come out. So we want them both. But remember, to whom much is given, much is what? Much is required. Whatever blessings we receive from God, he is expecting us to share those blessings with the people of God, both naturally and spiritually. Now, this, if this doesn't make you a little bit uncomfortable, then one or two things are happening. Either you're doing really good by God and God's people, or number two, you so far gone, it doesn't even matter. And we're going to try to reel you in, okay? So watch this. Acts chapter 2, verse 36 through 41. Therefore, Acts chapter 2, 36, therefore let all Israel be assured of this, God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. That's spiritual. So remember, whatever we get from God, we share it naturally and spiritually. He goes on, spiritual. When the people heard this, they were cut to their hearts, and they said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and all who are afar off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Now, watch this. Still spiritual. Say amen. Spiritual. Still dealing with the presence. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted the message of Jesus Christ, the message were baptized, and about 3,000 souls were added to their number that day. Now, I want you to understand that Peter and the 120 are there, but this does not seem like it is a super slam dunk situation. This doesn't seem like it's as pleasant as we've made it out to be all the years. It says in this scripture that in verse 40, it says that he pleaded with them. He warned them. That sounds laborious. That sounds like he's pouring out and a lot of it is not being received. He says, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Are you all staying with me? It sounds like he's putting them, him putting himself out and the rest of them are putting themselves out trying to get this message across. But you're saying, but 3,000 gave their lives to Christ that day. My question is this, how many were there? How many had to be there to get 3,000? I mean, you can have a, a church of 500. How many do we get out of that? Some writers say there were 40,000 people there. They are laboring trying to get folks to come. They're begging them. They're pleading with them. And they are warning them. But 3,000 got it. Now, so watch this. Watch this. One scholar again said it was about 40,000. We don't know how many it was. We're not going to even try to mess with that. We know 3,000 got saved. But the responsibilities of the believers, the apostles, it didn't stop when the folks were added to the church but was greatly enhanced 
after they were added to the church. This is a message for today's church. Individuals give their lives to Jesus Christ, and the church almost always is done. Am I talking to three people? Maybe at home, okay? The church is almost always done once they give their lives to Jesus, Jesus Christ. But remember, we are blessed to what? Be a blessing. So let's look at Acts chapter 2 and continue. Verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to breaking of bread and to prayer. Now we're going spiritual again. We're going spiritual again. He's continuing this spiritual journey. All right, he's continuing the journey. 3,000 have come. So the first thing that they're doing, they're devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking of bread and to prayer. Amen. We're eating together, fellowshipping. I mean, I know the church folks don't do this today, but this is what they were doing back in that day. I think maybe we should look at this and say we might need to revisit what we do and how we do it. Okay, see, those phones didn't get turned off. That's okay, praise the Lord. We know you're here. <laughs> okay, now watch this. Watch this. 43, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Watch this. We are still spiritual. Amen? So whatever we get from God, we need to share it with the people of God. Naturally, and spiritually, naturally and spiritually. But now when we start talking about blessings, we want natural blessings. We want the presence. Am I talking to anybody here? We want the presence. See, that phone going off those phones, that's just God saying, I I'm just saying amen. That's all. All right, saying amen. We want the presence. But here's the thing. To whom much is given, much is also required. If I get the presence, he's expecting me to share the presence. All right, all right. Verse 44, I know we don't do it like this, but you just need to know how it was done. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. All right, we just lost the whole church. I don't care where you go, almost always the church is done. First of all, as soon as they get baptized, we're done. And then if you start talking about sell anything to give it to anybody under any circumstance that I didn't work hard to get. All right. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of the people of God. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Oh, 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 oh. Now we might give to somebody if we don't think they need it or if we feel real sorry for them. But ordinarily, I'm only going to give to people that I think can give to me. Okay. Am I, talk I mean, can we just be real for a couple minutes? I mean, we don't have to be real for the whole class. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> the New Testament was about community in that day, and it's still about community today. We just haven't caught up yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there. If this is on our mind, this is on our hearts, we're going to get there. We have a loan program. That's a way of getting there. We have gift programs. That's a way of getting there. But they're not nearly as extensive as they need to be. We have the capacity to wrap a family or maybe two or maybe three. Who knows if we start what God will do for us and how, where we will end if we have the mind to serve. Hey, right, we got right here, Senior AP uh, Connor. He's walking. Digging, get me another microphone. God we bless you, three. Pastor. All right, bless you, sir. At the same time, when we a new one, when we're willing to commune with each other, we got to be. We have to be willing to accept the communion, uh, accept uh, the favor. Uh, Sometimes, uh, Christians, we're reluctant to 
receive other things from Christians. Yeah. So we, we might do okay on the given part, but we also, to come together as God's plan, we need to be willing to fellowship, and it's okay to accept something, you know, during a time of need, and thank you for that. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Praise the Lord. We got right there. Evangelist, go right here. Give us your name, please. Evangelist Taylor. All right. You know, uh, God has put it on my heart, and I'm, I know I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. They're immigrants that has come into our city, you know, and they are around the stores, groups of them. And I'm going to say this quickly. So God has put it on my heart to pass out church cards, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to get cards today. Not only that, I'm going to try to have a little money in my pocket. I'm going to have them to pray because it's a way of reaching out spiritually to help them. All right, to praise the this. Lord. All right, we're all looking for different ways that we can touch and different people that we can touch, all right? And the whole thing, I think, is actually getting started. Let's just get busy. Some are going to be receptive. Most are going to be receptive. Some may not. That's okay, as long as we are involved and we understand it is community. We may be blessed personally, but God is counting on us to share the blessing corporately. Whether it is the word of God or the riches of God, we should share with the people of God because we're blessed to be a blessing. Now, earlier during the week, I think like, like Monday or so, AP, AP uh, Moore shared with me this little note that was on, on one of the, our walls in the office. It was just a little note. And it was, it was really interesting. I believe it was done by my granddaughter, Kristen. I really believe. I don't know who did it, but I, it's just like her heart. And I believe it was. And this is what it said. It says, the church of the living God and every church is the best and God. <laughs> it was real simple. It's just a little note. I mean, you can tell a child did a lot of little stars on them. The church of the living God and every church is the best and God. Are you all staying with me there? Now, now, I don't care who wrote it. I don't know who wrote it. I didn't even ask. But I'm thinking whoever wrote it is looking at the church corporately and not the church privately. Because this church and every church is the best because God is the father of this church and every other church. And so there is a corporate mindset when it comes to the church. There's a community mindset when it comes to the church. And so as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, blessed to be a blessing, with that in mind, one of the first things we need to do is be nice. Now, let's be real we didn't all come from nice environments. We have been bullied. We have been abused. We've been misused. We've experienced things that dampen our spirit. People have told us we never amount to anything. And so we've been in pretty bad shape. And a lot of our niceness has been carved. It's been cut off. To be nice or courteous or kind is to be considerate and respectful of others, whether or not they are considerate or respectful of us. How someone treats you and me should not dictate or decide how we represent him. Amen. So watch this. If somebody does something and says something and it causes me to snap at any time, that is a sign that I have lost some ground, that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. If I snap on somebody, I'm not where he wants me. If I say something to somebody that's not kind, I'm not where, come on, I'm not acting like him. Okay. Luke 6, 31 says, do to others as you would have them do to you. And that just might be the problem. Folks may be expecting from us what is not yet in us. Okay? It might not be there yet. Now, if we stay with Christ, we might get there. But it might not be there yet. And we got to be honest about where we are because I don't, I'm not around you enough to know where you are. 
and you're not around me enough to know where I am. So I don't know when the last time it was that you snapped. I don't know when the last time, whether it came out of your mouth or was just in your heart. I don't know when that was. You know when that was. You know when your spirit was messed up. You know when you're at home and, and you're messed up at home. You know, I mean, I don't know your home life. You know your home life. Watch this. Mark 12, 28 through 31. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them de debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And I was thinking, that's just me, I was just thinking, what about the believers who don't love themselves? Mm. You know, last week we discussed the 50,000 people who killed themselves and in 2022 and the 1.7 million who tried but did not succeed. Notice, maybe it's hard to love others or be nice to others because we don't love ourselves and we're not nice to ourselves. What do you think about that? That is something to think about. Or maybe we have been trained by others or have been trained by ourselves to not be nice since niceness is often viewed as a sign of weakness. Yeah. Deacon, Praise, give us your name. Praise the Lord. Uh, Deacon Marvin Palmer. Okay. Bishop, I was sitting here and I said I was just going to absorb today. <laughs> okay. But Praise you're filling Lord. me up. The All word right. is coming Praise through, filling me up, and I'm full right now. Uh, as I was, you know, looking and going through the scriptures you have here and putting them in today's, how we can apply it today and yeah. do the same as they were doing there. But then as I go into this, uh, in the 37, no, in th at 36. Uh, where where are this, you now? Uh, ask, I'm going all the way back and coming up to where you are. Okay, you're going back. What, what number are you on? Acts, Acts 2, 36, Okay, 41. all right, you wait. I'm just going to bring out some points okay. that I didn't, that, that them filled me up. Since all right, been praise the Lord, man. Uh, <laughs> You scaring me now. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Right. I can see in my mind's eye, my spirit's eye, that there was a crowd. There was a gathering, mm -hmm. and they were preaching. And, and, and the first thing that uh, he says is, therefore, let all this. He kind of like hit him with that bombshell. God has made this Jesus, he, whom you crucified. Yeah, yeah. He kind of like, okay. Yeah. And then uh, it says here, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. So uh, then they they cried out, what shall we do? That was spirit-led there for yeah, them because, yeah. okay, and then he told them that about repenting. And then it goes on here when the next bit you said here, uh, the scriptures say, according to scriptures, uh, that the people were at it and they kept on. Yeah. You know, the so many came and they kept preaching and they started uh, uh, feeding them taking their natural needs yeah. into consideration. Yeah. And it's like they were just in this big gathering going on and on and on. And uh, then it says he hit them. Then he brought out the scripture about do unto others as you have them doing to you. And uh, then I came down to Mark, and this is what really got me interested in where I had to speak, is that when the uh, teachers of the law came to Jesus, talking about which is the greatest, mm -hmm. Uh, that's kind of like what we get now when we start, you know, like you can always get there when you do things, people will give you a hundred reasons why we can't do it and not give you a one reason on how we can do yeah, it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? We, that's what we have to expect. If we get out the church, going out in the streets and going, be expecting uh, teachers of the law, so to speak, coming to you with saying, okay, you know, yeah. why is this? Yeah. And then, you know, I've heard, and this is the final thing, I'm going to let you go on. Praise, <laughs> the, Lord. Praise the Lord. For the moment. <laughs> uh, For the moment. <laughs> uh, as you said there, when there's so many that don't like their sales, uh, I was talking a couple of times, and these were brought out about the young youth today. Mm -hmm. 
they're not liking each other for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 that's true. Uh, let's let's just deal with this right here very quickly. I'm gonna mess with this just for a moment. I, I know the youth are messed up. Amen. They're messed up, and you know they they learned it from the adults, and they they learned it from they learned it from us. Okay, because we, the seasoned believers, have said too much. We've spoken too much. They've heard too much. They've seen too much. They, they, they know we go to church, but they don't see church when we come home. So now we got a real problem. Our, our conversation isn't correct. Our movie watching isn't correct. Our music watching isn't correct. We've got some problems. And why the church, those that are young, have just decided I am going to really be radical. Because all of us were young. All, at one point, all of us, those of you that are watching me right now, you still may be young. Even those individuals that are almost 70 think they're young. I mean, I'm not messing with that, okay? I'm, that's, that's, that's above my pay grade, okay? But, but the point being, we had seasoned believers who shared with us righteousness, and we saw righteousness in them, which even when we were off, we knew where on needs to be. We knew how to get back. We knew, I mean, when I was in the military, I had grown up in the church. I knew what all these folks are doing. Uh -uh, I can't go there. I'm not crossing that line. I'm not perfect, but I'm not crossing that line. I'm not doing that. I know better than, come on, are you all staying with me? If you don't have anybody to show you that, if there's no example of that, if the church is not going to the homes to help show them that, where are they going to get that from? Where are they going to get that from? So they're saying things to their peers. In, in D.C., they say they're hijacking cars, and most of the, those individuals that are hijacking cars aren't even old enough to drive cars. If they are acting that way and talking that way, where are they getting it from? Okay, watch this. Paul says in um, Ephesians 4, 29 through 31, I want to say this here. I have to speak over myself. I have to speak over myself, and I have to speak life into myself. Okay, I'm not letting any negative thoughts get into my head. I'm not going to allow that because it takes me places I don't need to go. I'm not co concerned about how an individual treats me. I'm really concerned about how I deal with how they treat me. This is what he says, Ephesians 4, 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Now, watch this. Watch this. It may not be corrupt to me, but if it's corrupt to them, I don't need to say it. Mm -hmm. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. This is my thing. And I talk to this about everywhere I talk to pastors and, and those that are spiritual leaders. What I say to you and what I say about you, is it true, is it kind, and is it necessary? For many, including believers, it's not. But it can be if we're willing to pray on it and work on it. Pray on it and work on it. Faith without works is dead. Kendra Cherry, a very well man, listed several ways to become a nicer person. Act with kindness. Let's start. A, act with kindness. According to scientific studies, acts of kindness triggers the release of endorphins and foster self-reinforcing habits. In other words, kindness breeds more kindness. Kindness becomes emotionally addictive. When we're not kind, it's going to breed not kind. But when we're kind, it's going to breed kind. You start being kind, and suddenly you're going to feel better. You're going to stop hurting so much when you start, because part of your hurting is your messed up mind. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what we call often stress. I'm stressed out because when she said something, or I didn't like that, or they ought to get me. Who cares if God is on my side? Can't nobody mess with me. Avoid being overly critical. 
I'm not working with you just a little bit. My thoughts of you, my thoughts now, my thoughts. Somebody say, my thoughts. See, I can't see your head. I don't know what's in your head. I don't know what you're thinking about right now. You may be thinking about, you know, greens and, you know, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking about. What are you thinking about? You may think about where you're going to eat when this class is over. How long is this going to last? I don't, I don't know what you're thinking about. But my thoughts, are my thoughts true? Are my thoughts kind? Are my thoughts necessary? I got to work on that. I can't be overly critical. My thoughts of you, watch this. If I'm going to be a nice person, I cannot have thoughts that are critical. People make mistakes. Watch this. When they make mistakes, first of all, everybody makes a mistake. And I cannot feel bad because I made a mistake. You know why I can't feel bad? Because you cover me. You cover me and you make sure I don't feel bad because you tell me it's going to be okay. You're not going to criticize me because of the mistakes I made. You're not going to walk on me because, because, watch this, we are brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Watch this. Don't talk down to people if you don't want people to talk down to you. C, be polite. Thank you. Please. I'm sorry. Don't be short. Be there in the moment. All that goes a long way when showing others how much you appreciate them. Can I mess with you just for a moment? Because if I can show you how much I appreciate you, then you instantly know how I appreciate myself. And if I don't appreciate you, it's a sign I don't feel that good about myself. D. Practice forgiveness. Let go of the past and present resentments and all of those toxic spirits that emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and sometimes physically prevent us from being who God created us to be. It takes a lot of energy to hold a grudge. It takes too much energy. Watch this. Watch this. We're in church, and you can be in four different sections, 500 seats. You might want to sit on that side of the church. Well, why do you want to sit on that side? Because I feel the spirit on this. No. You want to sit on that side because you don't want to talk to her on the other side. That is not the plan of God for the church of God. Practice gratitude. E, practice gratitude. Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Every day, take a few minutes and think about things that you're grateful for. Amen. You can get lost in gratitude. Being grateful, according to studies, reduces stress and produces happiness. You need to write it down. If you're grateful for something, write it down. Make it plain on tablets that other folks can see it and run with it. Maybe you need a gratitude journal. So I'm going to ask right now, real quickly, what are you grateful for? What I mean, you, when something bad happens, it gets on your mind, it stays on your mind, it wears you down, it messes with your spirit. You can't do nothing right for God because you're not even thinking about God. You're thinking about what she said or what he did. What are you grateful for? Is anybody in here grateful for anything? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give me something. Somebody give me something you're grateful for. One thing, real quick. One thing, uh, just to study, because you said in the moment. Yeah. I'm a senior assistant, Pastor Hardy. Okay, in praise the, the Lord. moment. So in the moment can carry on to my music. That, can okay. carry on to. He walks with his music. He walks. And let me just say this. You don't even need a mic now. We just going to shout it out. Go ahead. Just shout out. If you got a mic, go ahead. Just shout it. You woke up. You woke up. Give me something. I'm grateful for love. What? For love. Grateful for love. Okay, grateful for love. Anybody? Health and strength. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Sharing Christ. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Family. Somebody else? You mean that's all? (laughs) You mean we done stopped? Amen. Can you see me? 
Can you see me? Okay, I mean, you may be wearing glasses, but you can see me. Are you grateful that you can see? Can you hear me? Are you grateful? Did you walk in here? Are you grateful that you can walk? Can you talk? Talk to me, somebody. You got family. You got friends. You got some enemies that you can pray for, and God is going to deliver them and make them your friend. There's so much that we can be. We can, be. can you eat? Talk to me, somebody. Can you eat some food? All right, let me say this here. Are you clogged up or did you go to the bathroom? You ought to be grateful. Somebody shout, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I am, I am grateful. Last thing, last thing. Being nice makes you more attractive as a partner. In 2019 study, in a study published in the Journal of, of Personality, participants, participants rated kindness as the single most important characteristic in a life partner. More important than money, than good looks, or a sense of humor. Now, I know nobody here is looking for anybody. You may already have somebody. But if you do or if you don't, if you think you might want somebody, then you ought to be nice. That's all I'm going to say on that. Let's go to compassionate. Number three, compassionate. To be nice and to be compassionate are totally different. To be nice or kind is to be courteous, considerate, respectful. Compassion is nice at another level. It means to have mercy or sympathy or pity and help when you can help. The Bible says in Matthew 14, 14, when Jesus landed and saw the large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Paul says in Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Made in the image of God, we are to display traits of God, which includes Compassion. So when the, when, when the, in the New Testament church, as Senior AP was bringing out, Acts 2, and others brought out, and I brought out, watch this, when they sold their property, they were being compassionate. When they gave to those that were need, that were in need, they were being compassionate. Okay? Are you all staying with me? I can almost say this. They would not have had nearly the number at the dinner if they hadn't bought them a car. I'm just messing with you. They didn't have no cars back there. Bought them a donkey. You need a donkey? We're going to buy you a donkey. I got, I got three donkeys. I'm going to share one of my donkeys so you can have a donkey. See, my amens are going to go down a little bit here, all right? Because now I'm starting to talk about your money. I'm starting to talk about your money. We got all tithers month coming, and folks got to got to decide if they're going to tithe to God or not. So if I'm having a problem tithing to God, do you not understand the kind of problem I'm going to have giving to somebody out on the street that I don't even know? That hasn't done it. God is my source. If, if I'm having a problem with him, talk to me three people, just three people. All right, watch this. Watch this. It's not about your title. It's not about your status. It is about your heart. One of the greatest acts of, of compassion is Luke 10. An expert of the law asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Luke 10, 30. In reply, Jesus said a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jesus just like telling stories, parables. You understand? He said when he was attacked by robbers, think about that for a moment, attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, they beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Anybody ever been beat up online? Anybody been, ever been beat up? No, nobody has ever been really beat up. No. So you don't even, see, see, watch this. So you read this. This goes over your head because you can't even relate to this. Okay. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. All right? So the preachers walked on the other side. Deacon Palmer was talking about everyday current event stuff like right now. That's what preachers and deacons would do because the Levite just walked on the other side. Why did we walk on the other side? I've never been beat up. I don't even know how that feels. I don't know the terror that goes along with that. So when I see that, it must be some kind of trick. I'm getting away from that. Am I talking to anybody in here now? So the priest walks by, verse 32. The priest saw him. The priest saw the man pass by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place, saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and watch this. And he saw him, he took pity on him. Now watch this. All three of them saw him. All three of them saw him. The priests saw him. The preachers and the apostles and the prophets and the bishops, they saw him. But they didn't do nothing. 
the deacons, the trustees, uh, the missionaries, the officers, they saw him, but they didn't do nothing. Now we get this man that nobody would even count worthy to be around a Samaritan. You know the Jews and the Samaritans didn't have any dealings, right? So here we have this Samaritan who's supposed to be a good for nothing. He sees him. The Bible says the Samaritan, as he traveled, verse 33, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him into an inn, took care of of him. The next day, he took out two denarii or two days wages, gave it to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which one of these, verse 36, which one of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus says, go and do likewise. So when we're in this class, what Jesus is saying to us, I want you to do that. I, didn't, I, don't, I don't just want you to hear this scripture. I want you to live this scripture. I want you to look for the person who's been damaged. Look for the person who's been hurt. Now, this is dealing with all of us because I don't think too many of us have done this. All right? Compassion is not only seeing the plight of others, but doing something to correct it. Number four, my last point. Know the enemy, defeat the enemy. Know the enemy, defeat the enemy. 2 Corinthians 4.4. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Our job is not to make folks receive the gospel, but rather to live and teach so that they see the gospel. Not receive it, but see it. Sometimes the only one they're going to see it in, in the grocery store. Uh, watch this. Where else, where else do you go? When you go buying clothes. I don't know. We don't go to too many places now. But whenever you go someplace, folks are watching you. When you're cutting your grass, they're watching you. Are you, are you saying hi to the neighbors? Or are you trying to ignore them? I'm just working with three people here. All right? How many different names the, are the many different names of the devil can help, uh, I, can help identify the many devices of the devil? In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, he's called the adversary. In 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, he's called the messenger of light. He demasquerades himself as a messenger of light. In 1 John 4, 3, he is the antichrist, the appointed uh, op, the, uh, the opponent of Jesus Christ. In, in Luke eleven fifteen, 15, he's called Beelzebub, which means the dung god. The dung. You know what dung is, right? The dung god. He's the ruler of the devils. In, in 2 Corinthians 6, 15, he's called Belial, which means worthless. He's called a crooked serpent. He's called a dragon. He's called an enemy. The father of lies. The god of this world. A great dragon. A murderer. The power of darkness. The prince of devils. The prince of the power the air. He's called a roaring lion. He's called Satan, serpent, or a snake. He's called the tempter, the one who tempts the people of God to do things that are contrary to the will of God. The enemy comes in many different forms with many different names. John 10, 10, Jesus says the thief, he called him a thief, comes only to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. Though Jesus, through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, we know who the enemy is and we can defeat the enemy. He's going to come at you differently from the way he comes at me. But he's going to come to kill, steal, and destroy both of us. Now, don't play him short because he's not to be played short. In Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, yours is in the NIV. I'm going to read mine from the King James. When he had been baptized... Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. See, that's blessed and being good. Before Jesus healed the sick, before he gave sight to the blind, before a lame man was made to walk, before a dumb man was made to talk, a deaf man was made to hear, or he raised anybody from the dead, God wanted the people to know who he was before you know what he can do. He's my son, and I'm well pleased. The very next verse. See, that's good stuff right there, right? That's good bless. We got to get out of here. Very next verse, Matthew 4.1. 
Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Good blessing, bad blessing. Which one? Is that what you want? I want the dove. I want to hear the voice. That's my, my son. That's my daughter, whom I'm well pleased. I don't want the wilderness thing, okay? So he led. The Bible says after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Well, what do you think? All right? I mean, we can't hardly go four hours without eating, all right? He's 40 days. Matthew 4, 3. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now he's challenging him. He's abusing him. He's he really taunting him. If you're the son of God. Watch, Jesus answered, it is written, man should not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The New Testament Messiah is reciting an Old Testament verse. Matthew 4, look at verse 5. The devil took him to the holy city. What are you talking about? The devil took him to church. Took the man to church, all right. Took him to the holy city. Had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the son of God, challenging him again, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him. It is also written, you should not put the Lord your God to the test. Matthew 4, verse 8. Again, you mean he's not done yet? You mean he's not done yet? We're dealing with Jesus. He's not done with, with, with Jesus. Can I share this with you? Understand, he's not done with us either. The devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Look at verse 11 because the verse 11 gets good. Now we're going back to the good blessing. Then the devil left him, gone, and the angels came and attended to him. They came and attended him. Now, that's the kind of blessing we want. We want the angels to bless us. Amen. Saints of God, through Jesus Christ, we're ordained to defeat the devil. Don't let him strip you of your peace in God or your place in God. We're blessed to be a blessing. So let's go home with the scripture text that we use Sunday. 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9. Finally, finally. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Then, now, and always, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay, watch this, evil with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. Not only is Jesus our Savior, but he is our example. Let me rehearse this. We act like him. We think like him. We help like him. We represent like him. We love like him. We forgive like him. We're nice and compassionate like him. We know the enemy, and we defeat the enemy like him. The Lord is counting us on us. We are blessed to be a blessing. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor in the house of God. Okay, Deacon's got a thought. He's got two minutes. That's all he got. <laughs> he said, that's all I need. Praise the Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, my daily prayer. Mm -hmm. Daily, I ask God to bless this day with peace, love, compassion, and understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a blessing, isn't it? And that 118.24, that's just me. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in this day. I set the tone. That's what I want it to be. Amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, we thank you for this time together with you and with each other. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for letting us be a blessing. And we're not where we're supposed to be. We're not trying to jive you. We can't do that. You know us. You knew us in the womb. You knew us before we were born. So now, God, I'm praying that you will prick our hearts and that you will change our hearts. And nothing we, gonna, nothing we will do will be overwhelming because we've done so little up to this point. Anything is going to be new to us. It's going to be different to us. But you're expecting it from us. And we say thank you. You have blessed us so tremendously. Now, God, show us how we might be a blessing to those that have not received you the way we have. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah. All right. Got a trivia for you. Here it is. Give the name of the book and the scriptures from the Old Testament that were used by the devil in Matthew 4. Okay. I'm going to go over it there. In Matthew 4, in an attempt to get Jesus to follow him, 
The devil recited scriptures from the Bible. The devil recited scriptures from the Bible in Matthew 4. Give the name of the book and the scriptures from the Old Testament that were used by the devil in Matthew 4. Am I clear on that? All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Give the book and the scriptures. Do not send an answer in with no scriptures. Amen. We thank the Lord for Deacon Palmer. Amen. And for his peace and prosperity and for his joy. Send your, send your book and your scriptures to Info at the Church of Living God by 11 p.m. tonight, 10-4-2023, for a gift of $2 and a chance to win five gifts of $20 at the end of the month. Now, we got some five, some five winners right here. We have Sister Jalisa Adams. She won $20. Missionary Victoria Alexander won $20. Amen. She keeps winning. I mean, the Lord's favored her. System, and I mean, we, every one of us just pulled a name. Just so you know, one person didn't go through and look and find her name. Sister Marsha Clark won $20. Sister Mary Connor won $20. And Sister Brenda Hubbard won $20. Those are our winners for the month. We love you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being online with us. God bless you. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Woo, amen. <laughs>